All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. I hope you had a great weekend. Let us start our discussion. This is about Delta Plus. I had done a, a couple of sentence discussion once before as well that Delta Plus is not a big deal. However, as you can see that the hype around Delta, Delta Plus is increasing. So I thought it is important to look into it because some of the cool beans had been asking for it as well. So let's let's have that discussion. This is Dr. Bean. Dot com. Uh, all the lectures that we do, they are here. If you go, you can check them out in this video library. This is CDC's tracking of various viruses. And I'm going to use some part of this, this page over here for our discussion. All of these links are present in the, in the description of this video. This is USA Today, but an interesting discussion here. This is Delta Plus on GVN, Global Virus Network. G this is GISAID. Again, you like it or not, there is some data here that is useful. Wikipedia, again, if you do not like it, you can, you can read from other places as well. But these are those resources that are freely available. That's why I put them out. This is Delta Plus on uh, Wikipedia. This is UK's Public Health England's document from 25th June. So this is July, August. We, we are way ahead of it, but still, this is still relevant, this information here. Here is an important one, which I think is interesting. Delta Plus is actually a set of other variants that have been rolled under Delta. So if you see here on 7.6, CDC is saying SARS-CoV-2 variants named AY1 and AY2 now aggregated with Delta variant. So they were not really the Delta's variation because, but there is so much similarity that they are rolled under Delta. Here is the next strain. We have seen this before as well. Next strain uh, tracks the variations so here are all various variations. What is interesting is we're talking about this delta variation here. And then there is this study which shows that delta and delta plus have not, especially delta pluses, have not reduced the vaccine efficacy. So that is this study over here. So again, all these links are present in the description. Now let's look at the data as I drew it. So here we are, there is a Delta plus virus looking for your attention here. Let's see. So summary, Delta variant, Delta plus variant is called a plus because it has one more mutation on the spike protein in addition to other mutations on Delta. So think about it for a second. This could mean that Delta plus should actually be similarly contagious or maybe a little more contagious because Delta plus has all the changes of Delta plus it has one more change on spike protein. It can have other changes. We have AY1, AY2, AY3 but there is an important common change and that mutation is on spike protein. However, you would see in this case, actually Delta plus becomes beaten by Delta. So then the question, why do we call it a plus? Plus means this is some sort of an upgrade to Delta, but that is not the case. Plus simply means Delta variant with one more important change to its spike protein. And what is that change? That is at the position number 417 on the spike protein, an aspar gene amino acid, a building block, an aspar gene amino acid is replaced with lysine amino acid. That is the spike protein change. So whenever there is a spike protein change, that makes us concerned that, hey, this may be 
an issue that would cause the virus to become more efficient, more contagious, and then possibly more lethal as well. In the case of Delta, this change has actually made it Delta plus. This change has actually made it less contagious, less efficient, because the binding of ACE2 with Delta plus spike protein, that binding affinity has reduced. And you would see from data that Delta plus is easily beaten by Delta. So although it is rolled under Delta, although it is called Delta plus, but that plus is not to say that Delta plus is more dangerous than Delta, it is actually less contagious than Delta. So that is the basic summary. So is it more contagious? No. Is it more virulent? No. Has it reduced vaccine efficacy? Not known so far. However, the study that I shared with you, they say that we do not see any significant change. So there may be more data as, as we see. There are three sub lineages, AY1, 2, and 3. And then has the testing system become defeated? Meaning, there is a change, is there a change on the spike protein that makes the testing systems not recognize a spike protein and fail? So most of the time, the testing system do not only work with the spike protein, they also look at other areas of the virus. That is why they are, most of them are still working correctly. So now let's look at the data. This is the data for US. Now, please remember Delta Plus is also called Nepal variant because its first origin was seen in Nepal. So here I want to share this data. And just to give you an idea of how the data is going to look like, data is going to look like that Delta, just the Delta, will look be more efficient. Alpha or the UK variant will look to be on the way out and Delta plus would look to be that media wants it to be scary but it is not scary. So this is just going to be a little troll in there. So let's look at the data. So check this out. In this data, let me see if I can increase the size. So here, this is CDC's data for US. And I'm going to go here to this bar. That is the week ending on 5-8-21. I'm going to go here and select 5-8-21. In this week, so now we are on the first bar. If you see here on this first bar, the most common variant at that time, so that is 5, 8, 21, 70% of the variant was alpha. Then there was other, but if you see here, delta at that time was 1.3%, delta, not delta 1. And if you look at AY3, 1, 2, they really were negligible. They were not present. Now, let's look at somewhere in the middle, let's say 619, for example. And there is an interesting thing. You saw that Delta started with a very tiny fraction. And then as the page refreshes, then if you see this orange is the Delta variant. Look at how small it started and how rapidly it has grown. Now here on 619, Delta is growing larger. However, if you see the Delta plus, that is one, two, and three, they are also increasing. And if you look at Delta AY3 variant or sub lineage is 4%. And if you look at these uh, orange, dark orange bars, they are AY3. And look at how slowly it is increasing. When Delta had the chance to grow, 
Look at the delta's growth. I'm going to hover the mouse over that. Do you see how delta grew fast? The delta plus was present to compete with delta. And delta plus is not able to compete with delta. So if you see, it is growing slightly more. But still, it is the delta that is gaining more speed or more um, ground. So this data can actually show you that delta pluses, AY1, 2, and 3, are actually not gaining ground at all. They are actually tiny. And if you look at AY1 or 2, they are negligible. They are somewhere over here in these tiny uh, slots. So 0.8% or even lesser than 1%. So I put some data together here. So let's look at it. It is the data coming from the same table. On the week ending 5-8-2021, Delta was 1.3% and Alpha was 70%. So Alpha was dominant. Delta was just starting. If Delta Plus was so bad, then Delta Plus, when that started, it will grow similar to Delta or better. But if you see here at 731, Alpha is almost out. 2.9%, and it is replaced with 83.4% delta. And the delta pluses, AY3 is now 9.1%. Others are still below 1%. And if we look at something in the middle, 619, once again, if you see alpha was 42.9%, delta AY3 existed at that time. Delta plus existed at that time as well. If you look at Delta, that had become 26%. AY3 had only become 4.4%. And then now, Delta does show a greater ground taken. So from this discussion, you can actually see that Delta is making faster and more rapid. Um, it's taking more ground. Delta plus is not. So is Delta Plus something scary that we should be scared of? No. And just for the completion sake of the talk today, this is the number of mutations in Delta, not Delta Plus. Delta Plus has some other mutations and one more spike protein mutation. So this is Delta. If you see here, three mutations on the open re reading frame. There are about seven mutations on the spike protein. Out of those, there are four that are more dangerous. And then there are more proteins on the other parts of the virus as well. Delta plus has one more mutation here on the spike protein as well. But that mutation actually went counter to the needs of the Delta variant to become more dangerous. And it has not. So that is the discussion. I'm going to just very quickly look at the tables data with you. So here, the Delta Plus suggests the variant underway, underwent an upgrade to become more virulent. But while little is known about the sublineage and its mutation, health experts say it is not spreading efficiently now in the US and Americans shouldn't add to their pandemic worry list. And we just saw the data as well. This is Delta Plus. Here on this page, again, the link is in the description. These references are interesting to look at. This is GISAID. Again, Delta Plus isn't really making any progress. And these are the other links that we have talked about. With this, we are done with the basic talk today. It was a short one. So I'm going to uh, hang up and come back for a chit chat. Please like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, there are three links in the description. You can use them to support it. And I'll see you in a few minutes.